So the first thing that I, I'll just share with design is um, um, it's really rare to find a, a, a basket that's just plain from start to finish. That's one of the things that I as a weaver and maybe other folks as weavers look forward to. It's kind of like the design. It's the cherry on top of your basket. That's the way I look at design. Um, it's not just the cherry on top um, that excites me in, you know, you, you have hours and hours and hours and hours of weaving and then you start to plan your design. You graph it out. It means something to you. You think of your ancestors. You think of um, uh, pieces that you've seen in museums and, and um, in different collections or on display in a shop. And, and, and you pull all of those ideas together and come up with a design. Um, so the design that um, um, I think is one of the simpler designs, and it seems to be used across uh, the cultures here in Southeast Alaska, is um, it's just a design using numbers. An even number will, um, will give you a, um, a straight up and down, uh, a vertical line as you circle your basket let's say you're using two colors. If it was just a natural weaver, a blue, a red, black, you know, your favorite color, whatever that may be, um, and or grasses. Um, uh, so in, in just knowing what this design needs to have a diagonal slant to it, you just know that's an odd number. It's an odd number. This design of red, non-color, red, non-color, red um, needs an odd number for it to shift by one stitch each row around. It will shift over by one and you achieve that again with an odd number. The cockle shell on the other hand if this were an even number, uh, when I say an even number, I mean warps. That's the structure of your basket. That's the skeleton that you weave onto, these being the warps or the spokes or the backbone of your basket. Um, having a, an, an even number will change this design into a, a um, it will stay on the same row as, as long as you want to carry that design band through. Let's say I want eight rows of cockle shell and again I would have to have an even number. I would make eight rows going around one, two, three, all the way down to eight and my line, my vertical line will go as far as as many rows as you want. So these are these are some of the uh, simpler designs um, by just playing with numbers. Numbers are very, very important, not only for designs like this or the cockle shell design, which again is the vertical, not the diagonal line. Um, uh, in order for your your uh, design bands to connect, um, you have to know exactly how many warps you have in your basket once you start up the wall from the flat bottom and you're going straight up now on the vertical. You need to, um, you know, of course, map out. You spend a lot of time preparing your materials dyeing your bark, gathering your grasses, and, and, and um, hours and hours and hours. You don't want to just throw something together and, and kind of fly by the seat of your britches saying, oh, I'll throw this here, oh, I'll throw that there. It takes a little bit of planning. Um, here are some um, 
different designs that um, have been graphed out using 30 warps. Again, this being the warp part of a basket. Very precise. Um, is it going to work in the middle there? If I go over two, will it center? Will it center with the points? Also, is my design going to mean something? Am I following custom and tradition of my people? Our designs in our baskets are just like the crests that our people have on their button robes. Each family, depending on the, the stories within that family over millennia, have, have created um, designs that tie to the crest that they use. And so here's an example. Um, when I introduce myself, I won't because I, we, we have a short amount of time to talk about weaving, but in my long introduction, I would have a sentence and it would be, Takwanedi Dutch Khan. I am grandchild of the Takwanedi people. So this is the protocol in my family and that I've been taught in the usage of a design that goes into a basket. It's been recorded by every writer up and down the coast that this design that my family used, it doesn't mean someone else out there didn't use something similar, but let's say I were to design a band This design belongs to my grandmother, my grandfather's people. I've been given permission to use this design, to talk about the design for the purposes of other people to learn about our cultural ways and how important crests are to different clans, to all clans, and how they're used. It's, they call it today, intellectual property. Um, I know when I look at another design, I'll go, mm, I need to ask that family, the tribal elder, the leader in that family, if I can use that design. Today, more and more, we're, a lot of people are using just everything. Um, they've been recorded very, very well, very, very well. And some of them don't necessarily um, work like a crest, like what I've talked about here. This is the track of the woodworm right here. Some of these, like just a solid line, everyone uses a solid line, the Simshian, the Hlingit, the Haida. And down on, you know, into the lower 48, half the head of the salmonberry, we all use that. Um, there are some designs in uh, that you only see, like the Simshian. There's a, a, a design there that only they use. And um, there's some designs that only the Haida use. Um, but... Anyway, um, in designing your basket, numbers are very, very important. Let's just say this is where I start my first stitch on my basket. I go around and around and around and around and around. And let's say, let's say I'm not going to do something like the track of the woodworm. Maybe I'm going to do some diagonal lines. Well, when I get to the end of it, maybe this tip goes over that far. I'll be missing a stitch up on this row. 
if they all went this high. I would have one more row here. So counting is really important um, in, in making sure between this point and this point for a whole set, let's say that's 15, and you want to make another set on this quadrant here, that's 15, 15 in that, and 15 here. Okay, that makes up the entirety of your basket. So that's 60 warps. Again, the spokes are the backbone, backbone to your basket. You have to know your number and you divide it in. So let's say, oh, from here to here, I want one V. Is that going to be divisible four times? And so numbers are very, very important, and, and, and balance is also important. Uh, um, connecting patterns are hard. Uh, patterns that ride alone and aren't connected uh, tend to be, I think, easier. Um, especially when you're doing something like making a hat and it gets bigger. Your numbers get higher and your numbers don't always work out and you end up with a very non-symmetrical hat. Um, so graphing and planning out your design. Um, uh, there's um, uh, another student in the class is going to be talking about um, a little more in depth about um, the placement of design on baskets, so I won't go there. But um, um, again, um, this design right here means more than a zigzag to me. That means it reminds me of the story that my grandmother told in a village not far from, my, from where I grew up. There was a chief with a high caste daughter. She was being trained by her aunties in the seclusion hut. This is a real in a nutshell version. She got lonesome. She befriended a worm. She took care of the worm. She nursed it, nurtured it. She treated it like her own child. She was kept in the seclusion hut for a long, long time until the aunties and the moms felt the time was right for many reasons, for training, to leave her childhood ways behind her. Well, as she fed the woodworm, he got bigger and bigger, and he started burrowing underneath the village. There's many versions of this story. This is just one that came from my grandfather's people. The brothers found out about, the, the high caste brothers found out about this woodworm. They found out what was taking their food from the food catch. They put together a plan of attack. They thought of all that it would involve and how feelings could be hurt and how death could happen. They planned the attack. They killed the woodworm that tore up the village. It had grown so big, it was all over, in tunnels all over under the village. The daughter was at the river with her aunties. They knew that was the day of the attack. The aunties did, the mother. They brought her to bathe in the river and do laundry. And she could hear in the distance the woodworm screaming. They killed it. And because of that, that family separated. 
the daughter was so brokenhearted. It was her child that they had killed. In her eyes, it was her child. And any time a mother loses a child, it's a tough thing to recover from. And some people don't recover. Well, she didn't recover. That was her child. And they say she walked into the forest. And as she walked into the forest, she sang the song. The song that she sang to the woodworm as it was growing and as she nurtured it. Do wak oo, do wak oo, lingi, lingi. Hey, ya, hey, ya, hey. Do wak oo, do wak oo, lingi, lingi. And that's the last thing her village heard as she walked into the forest. They never saw her again. Her heart was broken. Her child was taken from her. And the family saw in making decisions. There are many morals in the story. But I, I, I don't want to go there. I just know that because of this story in history, because our family ties to the woodworm, they came up with a symbol. And our family uses this today. It's the track of the woodworm. That's what it represents. And there are designs up and down the coast. Again, a lot of public domain uh, designs also. Cross-cultural um, Simshian use it, Haida use it, Thingits use it. Some designs are owned by all of us or shared. Um, so, yeah, away.